Hello, I'm back again. My name is Patricia Gasu and this is Reporters Blog. This week, as usual, you already know the old Fadama saga and I have lots of my reporters going to come here and they're going to share with us their experience. Please stay tuned. And welcome back. I have Latif Idris here with me. How are you feeling, um, Latif? I'm good. Bye. You were beaten up. Yep, I was beaten, battered, and bruised. So how are you feeling now? Um, better. Uh, anyway, sorry about that. It's all part of the job. Yeah, job has that. You know. <laughs> yeah. How 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 did it all happen? Yeah, you know, um, that's Monday. After editorial meeting, you know, information hit our wire that. Um, some residents of Sodom and Gomorrah were demonstrating against the demolition exercise that was being, you know, undertaken yeah. by the AMA. So quickly, I, I rushed there to look at the situation. Now, they started from the National Theatre, so that was my first point of call. Now, from the National Theatre, they moved to the forecourt of the state house because the police were at the National Theatre yeah. to stop them from, you know, demonstrating. So they moved to the forecourt of the state, uh, house. state house where... Meaning at the National Theatre, they couldn't stop them? No. They, they were there in, in, in huge numbers, you know, hundreds of them, about 900 of them. Uh, and so the police rushed there quickly to stop them from demonstrating. Okay. So they made their way to the forecourt of the state house. With, with the aim of presenting a petition to the president. Okay, so where were you by then? So I followed them to the national, th uh, to the forecourt of the so state house. I think house. you, you adding up was 901 or yeah. two. <laughs> you yeah, you can, you can see With your that. cameraman. No, I went there alone because it was breaking. So I had to be there on time to report. Oh, okay, so okay. I took the lead for my cameraman to join me later on. Okay, okay. Yeah, so at the state house, when they saw me, they, they came to me, you know. They came to me like, okay, you are one of us, you know, mainly Muslim populated yes. area. So they came to me, you're one of us, you can speak to us, you can take pictures. Some of them went to the extent of faking that, okay, I'm hungry, can you take a picture of me? I said, <laughs> no, we don't do that. So those who faked, I didn't take a picture of them. Okay. I recorded them and then spoke to some of them. So at the state house, the, the, the leadership of the demonstrators went in a meeting with the police officers at post. The, the meeting lasted for about five minutes. After the meeting, they, they were a bit angry. So they, they were leaving the state house. Getting to the entrance, they returned. We didn't know what happened. They returned back. And again, they were... They were in, so united. Yeah, at that point. Because it got to a point, the, the followers were not happy with the leadership because okay. They got a sense that the leadership didn't represent them well when they met with the police officers. So they were angry with their leaders and there was a bit of exchange uh, at, at the place. Now, so we moved from the State House, then they went to the Accra Sports Stadium. From the State House to the Accra Sports Stadium, the police followed them briefly okay. to a point and then they it were on their own. To go. So I spoke with um, COP Ekufu. Okay. He was in charge of the police officers who were, you know, escorting, escorting them out the, of the, premises, the okay. protesters. That these guys are moving in a group. Do you know where they are going? He told me, yes. They've met with the leadership. They've told them what they are doing is illegal because, you know, public order acts. If you want to embark on a demonstration, you need to get clearance from the police. From the police before they you didn't do that. So the police said they met them and told them that what they are doing is illegal. So. They should go back, do their homework well, and come back. <laughs> but I told him, no, these guys, as you can see, they are moving in a group. You do not know where they are going yeah. and what they are going to do. He told me, no, we've dispersed them. Clearly, they were not dispersed. So I sensed that these guys were going to do something. We're up to something. So I said, okay, let me follow them and see where they are going. So from there, I cross posted them. They hit the high street. That was where the drama started. At the high street, there was huge traffic. You can imagine the numbers. You still... Up with them? I was with them, causing them, uh, you know, they were distracting a lot of things on the road. 
you see the vegetation that was planted along they the high street. Everything. They cut it, they uprooted it, and they were littering the streets with it. I was taking shots of all that and recording. Then the traffic was so huge that it came to a standstill. So they were in the traffic, jumping, drumming, dancing, and singing war songs. At that point, I also said, okay, this is compelling. You know, we do compelling stories Compelling here. content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I said, okay, let me take a bit of a shot and record the, the sound. In the process, then I saw four guys just jump on me. What are you trying to do? Before I could say Jack, the first punch had landed, second one. I can tell you the impact was so great that I said, okay, I cannot take it anymore. Did you fight back? No. Why? I was in a dilemma. You know why? Why? Because I was thinking, should I punch them back? Or should I just, you know? Because, okay. Then so I was saying 900 against one. Against one at that point. Because there were four of them at that point. But then if I had punched back, I tell you what, you. The, the numbers would have been... Thank you. you, you, you so... Would have buried you by now. You know, <laughs> according to your tradition, would have buried exactly. your religion would have buried you by now. Exactly. So I restrained and didn't punch back. So I was just blocking the other punches that followed. In the process, my phone fell from my hand. And another person took it. Yeah. So I made the attempt to pick it. One of them was quick enough. He picked the phone and bolted with it. So I also said, okay, this is my phone. I have everything on it. Let me follow up and get my phone. Then the others held me back. They said, you can't follow me. I said, no. The guy has my phone. It's either you let me pursue him and get my phone or you go and get my phone for me. They said, no, you can't follow him. So they held me till this guy was gone. I looked through the crowd. I couldn't find him. Then they allowed me to go. I followed him. I just... After all the beatings, you're still going to follow up to take your phone? Because I needed my phone. I have information on the phone. <laughs> oh, you understand? That's nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and so I, I went through the crowd looked everywhere i just couldn't find this guy and i tell you what all this happened in a broad daylight we had passengers drivers all seated behind their wheels oh, watching, watching me none of oh, them so none of them came to my rescue and i understood them because these guys had calluses and sticks so and no one would venture the, exactly so so they all sat in their cars and watched the assaults oh, and the and the robbery they assaulted me and they robbed me as well you know so and, sorry so so sorry about it was that. it was unbelievable but i see you're well now you're fit yeah physically strong. you see i'm well but inside i'm still feeling the pain and you know i went to the hospital and yeah. so I, they gave me some medication which i'm taking and i feel better now though good to know you're better yeah yeah oh so sorry about that anyway thanks for your time on reporters blog you're welcome <laughs> and that was latif idris uh, my colleague joining me on reporter's blog. I have more coming up. Please stay. And welcome back. I have Julius joining me on Reporters Blog for the first time. Welcome. Thank you very much. It was your first time ever going to cover something like that. It was my first time. I, and actually, tell me about it. Um, well, I'm, I'm used to always sitting back and watching the TV, people bringing me the news. But this time, I found myself right in the middle of the action. And I was amazed at how news came because um, everything was happening so fast and thick. And I didn't know what to do, but just to follow the crowd and bring the news to everybody. So when you got there, did you have to interview people or...? Actually, I was helping Gladys produce, um, produce their reports. So okay. I was bringing people for her to interview. And um, it, it got to a point, the news were, were coming from different angles. So I had to be at another side, covering it, taking pictures with my phone and taking videos with my phone. And she was at the other side and it was all coming in, taking fast. And no one attacked you because you're using a phone. Uh, Lati was actually attacked because he was doing the same thing. Actually, it got to a point I was scared because um, I was, I was, you know, I'm tall. So I was just standing there with my phone up high and, and the police were like, take your phone away. They are going to take it away from you. And they were burning ties and woods and they were, they literally blocked the whole street, the stretch that yeah. led from to the Agwebushi area. And it was so scary at some point. Wow. 
So did, were the people you went to speak to to come over to Gladys so Gladys could I, Initially, they wanted the media to, to speak for them. So they were welcoming. They, they wanted okay. us to, to sit down and wait for their leaders to come so they could have a press conference. So they were willing to talk to us and everything. They weren't rowdy at all. So tell me about your experience. My experience actually was... It was a very good experience for me because um, being my first time covering a major story and was you know that story was breaking and to be part of it I, I felt very privileged to be part of it at that particular moment wow so so tell me the crowd when you saw the crowd in the first instance what, what, what was your impression initially when we saw them first they were just wielding placards and boards with inscriptions protesting moving up to and fro the streets so i was like i was just looking around i was i was surprised i was just looking around following gladys uh, following gladys and thinking what is going on what am i going to do and then before i could realize um they were just moving from one side to the other side they were blocking streets and the police had parked but the police weren't confronting them anybody okay. they were just doing what they wanted to do so, so when gladys asked you to go and call them that was when it, it hit me that I'm, I'm actually here to work, not to <laughs> look at what is going on. So uh, uh, you, you need to look at who you are going to bring to the camera to talk. And it was, it got to a point I had to use my, my, my senses because some people were very angry. Some were very sober, but some were very angry at what the demolition exercise had caused to them. So they were just eager to speak to the camera. Okay, so you went to those that were so angry or the calm ones. Because we wanted because something that was... Already you were scared. I was scared, but because we wanted something that was compelling, something that could actually... Hey, we never go the without the word compelling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you, you, want to, you want to tell the story from the people's perspective, not yes. from your journalistic yes. perspective. So we, we were... I, I needed someone who could actually come and say how they were feeling because that is what we wanted the people out there to know. So that's what I did. Oh, well. That's, that's, that's good. I believe you learned a lot. I, I learned a lot. And I, I, I think it will go down as one of my, my, my best journalistic moments. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Thank you so much for thank, your time. Thank you very much for having me. And we'll be right back with more. Please stay. And welcome back. We're still talking old Fadama demolition. And some of my colleagues are here to still tell me some of the challenges they went through and their experience. Welcome to Reporters Blog, David Ankoma and then <laughs> Derek Kosam. But welcome to Reporters Blog. Thank you very Thank you. much. So tell us your story. Well, I think I'll let you start. He was, oh. he was behind the equipment. The equipment that gave the shots to the viewers. So David, okay, so let me start with Ankoma. Uh, well, um, it wasn't uh, easy as um, mm -hmm. you may see on telly. Yeah. Because uh, we go through a lot. Uh, Tell me some of the challenges you faced during this coverage. You see, um, it got to a point. Uh -huh. um, the people thought we were um, at the, we, we were we, like uh, we, are, we support what is going on and. Um, uh, they think that um, probably we are there to make um, our news out of um, what is going on. Okay. Not thinking about what they are going through and a whole lot. But, uh, sometimes but did, did, did some try to attack you whilst taking the coverage? Oh, yeah. But it got to a stage we have to explain things to them because for them to know that um, for we, we are not... Uh, we don't focus on one side okay we, okay we okay. are always in between okay all right yeah all right well uh <laughs> you see i'm laughing all along when i told when i got to work on um i think it was since the, over the weekend yes yeah, sunday on tuesday or monday it escalated i think on monday so when i got here we steve asked that i go to the place to get him a live feed from there around 6 p.m as to what was going on as to whether he would sleep so i just called and I know I love to move out with yes, him. He understands yeah. me. So I called and I said, cameraman. Uh, I called him camera one. No size. I'm like, let's move out. And he said, Charlie, call. <laughs> if there is no protection, I'm not moving. And I'm like, you trust me. You know how, how we do our things. 
I said, no, no, no. So I had to pick a phone. What kind of protection was he talking about? Getting somebody from the town to stand behind us so that the people from the town will realize that we are one of the... We are one you're of you're them. part of them. Yes, so that they don't attack us. So that was how we got the protection for one guy. His name is Aminu. He's from, he's from that side of town. He's a brilliant guy. Okay. okay. So he took us to town. And so he's, we stood in the midst of the crisis and we were able to shoot for TBS. And then on Wednesday evening, we also had to go there to see how the people were sleeping. And so with the sun gun and everything, we still had to, uh, we, we had to make as many as, uh, as many as six calls to people to let them know that we are coming there. So when we, when we went there, we, we had as many as eight people just behind us, making sure that we are protected from the people. And these are goons. When you say goons, okay. people from the community, people in the community we would respect a lot. So with the eight people, was that comfortable enough for you? Um, or you wanted more people behind you? You see, whenever you are in a, when you are, you, you go on fold and um, you know there will be a challenge yeah. over there. You have to um, at least Secure get, yourself yeah, a bit. Even if there is no uh, police protection there, so far as um, you have the people within backing yeah. you, yeah. Um, it sometimes it gives you the um, upper hand to you know, uh, work. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the same people, the same uh -huh. people that were backing you, did they take you around? Yes, they took us yeah. around. They took us on our trip. They took us to town, to where the people were, to the most dangerous part of old Fadama. Okay. Walking, walking along he the He was that same proposition. Were you not scared? He, well, well, I, I, I got I, to a stage. Mm -hmm. You see, I do, like, we are being trained okay, mm -hmm. okay. for that. Mm -hmm. But it's just that uh, whenever you are moving, you have to at least ask two or three questions okay, in order okay. to know mm -hmm. um, what um, you are actually going there to do. Because sometimes you may go to the uh, fault, um, the information being given here mm -hmm. will be different from what uh, you see uh, on the fault. Because um, when it comes to um, cinematography, a lot goes into it. Please repeat the word. <laughs> Why do you put it? He's talking yeah. about cinematography. Yeah. Really, really, really. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> we have uh, a, a lot goes into it. Uh, why am I saying a lot goes into it? Sometimes um, you have to be um, smart. Even though working, you have to be smart. Smart quick enough, thinking. yeah. Yeah. So that um, whenever um, there's a problem, you can inform your reporter, your reporter okay, but sometimes okay. people may try to attack the reporter as shooting you use one eye of yours going around so that um you know what is going okay around. yeah you see why i like akuma not only does he know his job he knows how to protect him in the field and he speaks impeccable english but you <laughs> <laughs> But you are big. <laughs> you know, camera one. You, 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 know, you, you, know, you, you know, I'm a technical guy. And then <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, you know, you, you, you make it easier. <laughs> when we get out there, we discuss what we want to do. So I tell him this is what I'm looking out for. Okay. And he's not one of those other people who would not want to be told, get me this shot or get me that shot. Because okay. he may be focusing on a, another shot. I will have my eye on another shot. Okay. So I'm like, David, Charlie, do this for me. Bah! Sorted. Okay, okay. And it gives me as many visuals as I would want. And at times I get angry. Because I have too many visuals to choose from. It makes the editing... But that is exactly what you want. But it makes it difficult at times. Because you choose this visual and then you play it, you realize this one is nicer than, than this one. So you keep on choosing and choosing and choosing. But... It's because, it's 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 because you don't have the technical eye. Thank so you, the, 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 two of you, the two of you have <laughs> been on the field. What has been your most challenging moment in during this whole demonstration, demolition? I think it was last night. Uh, 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 Wednesday night. You see, on Wednesday night, we were walking without a sand gun because we didn't want, want people around to know that we had come you there with a the camera until we had got to the place where we want to shoot. So we were walking in the dark. And they were taking us through Lungulungo. Taking us through very small places. There are times I have to walk like this with my back against the wall to be able to go through the spaces. Okay. You're too big. So how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm on the weight loss therapy. Don't worry. This one will go down. So that's how come we were able to get there. Very challenging. Walking through places that are filled with sawdust and water. And so when you step in and you're not too careful, you might slip and fall. Yeah. And imagine working with a camera. 
and holding the camera and protecting your camera and protecting your phone, protecting your lives as well. But in all of that, Charlie, it was, a, it was a nice experience, very pathetic scene. People sleeping outside. At the point in time, we, we got emotional because these are people who are just like us and they are sleeping outside. And you know, they sleep in, in terms on mattresses. So if David sleeps one hour, he wakes up, yeah. and he sleeps another one hour, I wake up, smart will come, just like that. So throughout the night, he sleep for one hour. And they tell me there are others who also sleep, who will not sleep at all. Just to keep watch. Just to be protectors yeah. of the ones who are sleeping. And they also told me, you remember the guy who said he, um, he hadn't eaten for almost two days yeah. because he had lost his food stuff to the demolition. So the others who sleep without any food to eat. Oh, that's so sad. Very. That's so sad. But I believe it has been... Well, it's been um, a tough time. A tough time for you guys. But still, <coughs> the demolition is on. Yeah. So you yeah. guys will still have to go back to the field. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for your time on Reporters Blog, David yeah, and Koma. Um, and um, Pat, I have uh, one thing to say. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I want to address the people, uh, the, the citizens of this country, that <laughs> whenever they see the uh, press man, it doesn't mean that uh, we are only there for our news. You see, a lot goes into it. Okay. Sometimes, now, um, whenever there's a situation like this, you are enemy to national security. Mm -hmm. You are enemy to your own people that you are out there to save. Mm -hmm. Why? Because probably, maybe, the security personnel may um, try to use force. They will apply force on them. The moment they see cameras around, yeah. they will calm down. Okay. And um, uh, secondly, when the, um, the people are there, no, let me put it this way. Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. <laughs> you, you, you gathered your words. You told me after, after the show. <laughs> and those are my colleagues. Derek Akosam and David Ankoma. Next is Red One Kareem Osman. He was also on the field and he's going to tell me his story. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. And as I said, Kareem Dean Osman Ridwan is here with me. You are also on the field. Yes. Um, I started on Sunday. Uh, that was actually when I was put on the beat. When we got to the scene, uh, the place was already in a mess. The police were still uh, struggling with the residents, you know. Uh, the residents, as I have said in a number of uh, the reports that I have filed, Res the residents were actually meeting the whole exercise with so much resistance. And so in the course of the whole exercise, you realize uh, the police officers uh, were calling for reinforcement. And it, it tells you how angry uh, the people were. One, one, one that I saw was the coco cellar. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the, yeah, the coco cellar's <laughs> issue, uh, you know, you realize she was very angry. She, she was, was very angry. Exactly. She was frustrated. And uh, I also decided to take it very calmly with her because, I, I mean, from where I, I stood when I was conducting the interview, I realized, I mean, she had very genuine concerns. This is a lady who... she was even about to throw a blow at you. <laughs> no, she no, was, no. With her words? No, 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 not really. But, I mean, she was just trying to uh, let me understand how dire the situation uh, is yeah. she's a, she's a, a, she's uh, taking care of her children single-handedly and the only source of livelihood is by selling cocoa and now almost all her items uh, have been destroyed even yeah. the pots that she uses she to boil them. water to prepare the porridge have all been vandalized as a result of the exercise and so she was just sharing her ordeal with me the fact that uh, she I mean, has to go to other neighbors to, I mean, 
ask for the port to prepare the porridge and also the fact that she doesn't even have a place to put her head and so she would have to make do with the floor i mean put firewood together so i want to know the place warm up to be able to sleep i want to know your first impression when you got there that's what i've been asking all your other colleagues your first impression when you got there well um before i got there you know I mean, the usual stories about Sodom and Gomorrah, the fact that the people are very violent, and so you needed to be careful, tread cautiously, get somebody to lead you into the community and all of that. So did you also get someone to lead you into the community? That was the initial plan. But when I got to the scene, that plan didn't really work. Because at the point, the police had mounted a blockade. And so people were not allowing in, and people were not being allowed to go out except okay. for the media and so the person who was supposed to have led me to the scene couldn't actually meet me and so i it was myself and my cameraman and so at a point i mean when the shooting and stuff uh, started and my I, I mean i got a bit emotional and my cameraman i mean jata george was telling me that we run let's i mean we've done this before flood and fire we were on the beach so this let's just, just take it, down, I take mean, it easy. gently and at the end of the day we will deliver and so we were just there he started shooting and the the residents i mean told me that we want to talk Okay, so you had it on a safer side. Yeah, not really, not really. But you see, uh, it, it, it comes with it, it, it comes it, it comes with how you are able to uh, make Come. yourself available to them so that they identify. I mean themselves with you if okay, they feel okay. that i mean you share in their concerns i mean they feel uh, you are one of their own so how did you encourage them that they wanted to speak with you well um once they told me they wanted to talk no i'm not sure they'll just come to you and then say take shot of me i want to talk no you see everybody uh wanted to talk because i mean nobody was giving them the platform and as of the time we got there we were the only media house and so everybody wanted to say something okay, okay. because at the point nobody had even come to them to i mean give them a listening ear that i mean these are our concerns we're not giving prior notice and our items have been just so they had all those issues okay. and so for them our coming was a, a a very big opportunity for them to i mean come out with all those concerns and so in the course of the interview everybody wanted to say something and so i said guys relax relax everybody will get the opportunity to talk but one person at, at a time. time and so that was when i mean they felt that well i mean indeed he has promised to give us the opportunity so to felt, talk so felt, let's just on top of the game exactly and so that's <laughs> how come i was able to get all the interesting sound bites that i mean we have so what has been okay one question I keep asking or what has been your biggest challenge? Well, the challenge uh, was, how do I even put it? The challenge actually was trying to make sure that at the end of the day, I get back to the office and hurt because at a point they were throwing stones. I, I was. I mean, I, I have to be realistic. I was terribly scared. And so at a point, one of the officers told me to follow them wherever they go. Because once, I mean, I'm with them, then my security will be guaranteed to, I mean, some extent. And so that was how, uh, I, I would say that was the major challenge. Okay. That was the major challenge but i mean being able to communicate interact with the people for me it wasn't really a challenge okay. it, it, it was not at all so what because is, once once they feel uh, you you are maintaining neutrality in the discharge of your duty they feel oh i mean this is a neutral person we can talk to he, he's not on the side of the city authorities neither i mean and so it had to be neutral exactly yeah and so once they identify you as one of their own they would want to talk to you has it been interesting? Covering well, this? it's been it's been because you've done flood and fire, um, other demonstrations, and this one demolition cum demonstration. Hmm. It's, it's 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 really been very interesting, and I have learned a lot of things. I mean, the course of this beat, I told myself that if I have been able to do this, then I've been able to go through this, then journalism be, for be, me will be a lifelong commitment because. 
I mean, despite all that, I enjoyed myself, though not enjoy like, but I really, I, I mean, in the midst of all the chaos and not being able to understand your concerns and being able to communicate them to, I mean, our viewers, for me, it was very interesting. Interesting indeed. Thanks for your time on Reports' blog. And that was my colleague, Red One Karim Dean Osman. Now to the soundbite of the week. Uh, John Dramon, Mama, Mr. Excellency. Me and my brother, we the beg you. Right now, the nation, we are the best performance in the nation. Help us. Daddy, we want you to help us, me and Aite boys, to get money, to bring in our own house. We are tired. But see, nobody can feed me. Nobody can feed my brother. Everybody run off me. Apart from why you are no fight. It was John Drummond and Mama, Mr. Excellent. We support you any day, any time. It was just help me and my brother to get money to look at our children. I don't go to school before, but I want my children to go to school to be a lawyer, a judge, and president. Me, my sensibility, don't know work. Only bossing. I don't go to school before. I try to speak my own English. And that's it for Reporters Blog. My name is Patricia Gasu.